Hi everyone and welcome to a new video on the CBI channel. In this tutorial series we're developing a Django and React application with login and authentication functionality. This is not the first video in this series, I've already done one before in which we've set up our Django backend. In this video we're going to continue and we're going to set up our React.js frontend using Beat. And in this video we will follow five steps. We're going to start by creating our React.js frontend using Beat. Next, we're going to start our server and inspect our frontend. We're going to add a new components folder where we're going to build all of the pages in the next videos. And we also need to do a little bit of work on the backend by installing Django course headers for the communication between the frontend and the backend and also changing our backend settings. So let's get started and create our React.js frontend using Vite. And right now we are on the Vite documentation and you can already see that it's very popular for next generation front end tooling. And to make sure that we know what to do, we can click on get started and there it will explain how we can build our React.js application using Vite. And it's actually really simple. You can see in the Vite documentation that it supports a number of different templates, both in JavaScript and in TypeScript. And one of them is also React. Now creating our first Vite project is extremely simple. We just need to use the command npm create vite at latest. So we're going to copy over that command and we're going to go back to our code. And in our code, I'm going to add a new terminal on the highest level of our folder. So it needs to be in the same directory as where our backend folder is located. And in there, we paste the command of npm create vite at latest. Now, when doing this, it's going to prompt you with a few questions. And the first one is whether we want to install the package called create v 5.1.0. Well, for me, that's all fine. So I'm going to type in a Y. And I was going to install a package that is going to be used to create your feed project. The next thing that it's asking for is our project name. Well, in my case, I'm going to call it front end. So I'm consistent with naming because the other one is called backend. Next is going to ask us to select a framework using the arrow keys. So you have a few different options here. But we, of course, are going to select React and then click on Enter. After that, it's going to ask us what variant we want to use. And the options are between TypeScript and JavaScript. And then the option of without SWC or with SWC. Now, SWC means speedy web compiler. And the difference between the JavaScript option and the JavaScript plus SWC is that the JavaScript option is compiling using Babel and the other one with SWC is using the Speedy Web Compiler to compile your project. Um, and I've read up a little bit on this option and it states that in development, SWC has a better performance and it's a bit faster than compiling your React code with Babel. Now, I'm creating relatively small applications, so for me, it really doesn't matter what option I select. Uh, for bigger projects, it's always recommended to go for SWC because it just makes your development and the build a lot faster. But in this case, I am going to select JavaScript plus the speedy web compiler because online it states that it has the best performance. Okay, and with that done, you can see that now the front end has been added to our Folder. And Vite also provides the commands that we can use to start our server, which is cd into the front end, npm install, and then npm run dev. So let's do just that. So let's first cd into our front end so we are in the right directory. Next, we need to run npm install because it probably needs to install some additional packages to make our application work. And we'll give it some time to complete. It took some time, but now all of the installs are complete and they found zero vulnerabilities, which is always nice. So now it is time to start our server and see the output. And we can start it by npm run dev. And you can see that our server has now started on port 5173. So maybe a little bit of a different port than you're used to with other React frameworks. So let's check it out. Okay, so we've now started the page in the browser and you can see that our Vite plus React app is now on. Um, and even with a nice button that already has a count and increases that. So that's very good. And if we take a look at the folder structure, you can see that there's currently not a lot in there. We have of course a package.json file and a package log.json which specifies the dependencies that are used by building this application. 
Um, it also has a configuration file, and if you would like to, you can also uh, change the port there, so you have another port where your application is running. Um, you have a git ignore file and an index.html file, which is uh, running our code. And of course, we have a source file where the actual content is located. Everything that we're seeing on that web page right now comes together in the app.jsx file. So in here, this is where all of our codes come together and, and what is actually be shown. So for example, you can see here that it has the counter that we just saw in the browser and also all of the text that was just displayed. Some of the formatting is being done with the app.css. So already in here, you can see there are some settings to format the page where we just were. Then we also have the main.jsx and the index.css. And the main.jsx file actually takes all of the content from the app.jsx file and creates an element in there called root. And this element called root is then displayed in the index.html file. Because you can see right here, that amongst some of the other settings that have been done, it also puts in the div with the ID root. So how it works, your codes come together in app.jsx. All of this code is then put into the main.jsx. You can see that right here, and they create an actual HTML element by it called root. And this root is then loaded into our index.html file right here, so that we have one HTML file with all of our JavaScript content. Now into this source file, we're going to add a new folder. And this folder is going to be called components. And uh, we're not going to do anything with that right now, but later on in the tutorial, we're going to create a number of pages in this folder for login, for sign up, but also for our homepage. And we're putting it in a separate folder. It's a little bit isolated from the rest. And that's nice because you don't want to have too many folders in this source folder. Okay, so React has now been set up correctly with Beat. We've also inspected the front end folder and started the server, and we have added a separate folder for our components. The next thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that this React front end can communicate with our Django backend. Because currently, uh, we of course have the front end and the back end folder in the same folder overall, but there's nothing going on between the back end and the front end folder that tells them that they belong together. And with Django, you need to specify which of the URLs and domains are allowed to make requests to the backend. So we now need to tell Django that our React.js frontend is one of those domains that can create requests and send those to our backend. And to facilitate that communication between our frontend and our backend, we're going to use Django course headers. And you can already see it in the description that Django course headers is a Django application for handling server headers um, across different origins. So that means that by using this package, we can tell Django to allow browser requests from other origins. Uh, and that's exactly what we're going to do because we need to add the origin of our front end. So I'm going to copy over this install. And in our code, I'm going to open a new terminal. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to CD into our backend because we need to make the change to our backend code. And we're also going to activate our virtual environment by typing in venf slash scripts slash activate because all of the things that we're doing in our backend need to be inside those environments. And in there, we do the command python-m pip install django course headers. And let's give it some time to install. And it is now installed. And inside of our backend, we're gonna go to the auth folder and then to our settings.py file. Because if we take a look at the documentation, you can also see that we need to add course headers to our installed apps. So we're going to go over to our settings and to the installed apps and underneath the rest framework i'm going to mention course headers like this the documentation also states that we need to add a middleware string to our project and you can see that we need to place this particular line of code inside of our settings and it also states that the course middleware should be placed as high as possible um, otherwise it will not work so I'm going to copy over this string and we're going to enter that into our middleware. And inside of the middleware, I'm going to put it in the top layer right here as high as we possibly can. And the last thing that the documentation tells us to do is to set at least one of the three following settings inside of our settings at file. Either the course allowed origins, which uh, enables to create a list of the origins that, that should be able to send requests to our Django backend. 
We can also set course allowed origins uh, with regular expressions, which make sure that you can use some kind of an expression to determine which origins are enabled and which ones are not. And you can also set course allow all origins, which will just allow all of the origins to send requests. Now, I would not recommend doing that at all, um, but it is an option that you can take. Now, in our case, we're going to use course allowed origins. And we're going to set the URL of our front end as one of the allowed origins. So we are back in our settings.py file and underneath the middleware, I'm going to state course allowed origins. And that needs to be a list. And in there, we need to provide the URL of our front end. So I'm gonna go over to our front end. I'm just going to copy the address from the bar in the browser. And in our settings.py, I'm going to paste that value in between these parentheses like this. And we're actually going to remove the trailing slash from the localhost 5.73 as well, just to be sure. And now we can save our settings at file and our front end URL with the localhost 5.73 should now be whitelisted in our Django application. And that means that when requests come from our front end, Django should accept and process those, which is nice. And that was the last task that we needed to complete in this video. In this video, we successfully created our React.js frontend using Beat, and we also whitelisted our frontend in our Django backend. In the next video, we're going to continue on our backend, and we're going to be creating a custom user model. And this is going to be the first step towards actually working on the login functionality. I want to thank you very much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe because that really helps. And I would like to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.